Welcome back to Jungle Gap. Today we're going to be looking at a game I played on Zintel, which I know for a lot of my community may be excited for. The reasoning for reviewing this game in particular is I think it's very relatable to some struggles junglers face when it comes to taking the game into your own hands and hard carrying regardless of teammates. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down each key moment, focusing on the fundamentals, my thought process, and mentality throughout this game, and how ultimately you can also apply these fundamentals to 1v9 in your own games. What's up everyone, I'm Coach Leo, also known as Babip. I've been a professional jungler for the past six years, played at Worlds four times, and have plenty of coaching experience. If you're interested in fast tracking your learning and achieving your desired rank, book a private coaching session or join the community by heading over to the Jungle Gap Discord, which will be in the description below. Okay, so jumping into the replay now, first and foremost, I think that the rating or the ELO range of this game is around from D1 to GM. And I'm going to keep this video pretty free flowing besides this start, because I want to go over the first fundamental that we're going to be focusing on, uh, which you should also be doing before the game even begins. So the first thing we have to understand is the very uh, first fundamental that we're going to be looking at actually begins before the game even starts. This begins as soon as all 10 champions get locked in. Okay, so we're gonna keep it paused here. So something that I work with and something that I teach the players that I work with and the players that um, I coach is we need to have some kind of pre-game checklist that we do every single game to give us the best chance and the best kind of early game plan. And we also want this checklist to not be too overwhelming, obviously because we only have a certain amount of time in the pre-game to actually um, start thinking about what kind of plan we want, right? So we don't want it to be too overwhelming. We don't want it to just be a very quick checklist that we go through. So the first thing on the checklist is win conditions. And this can range from a variety of different things, right? This can be which objective are we playing for, which lane is going to be very important in this game. So if you have like a Draven, for example, we want him to have gold. That's that's a win condition. If we have a split pushing champion like Trundle, maybe we want to get the grub. So these kind of questions is what you should be asking yourself when thinking about the win conditions. And that's the first thing on the checklist. The second thing on the checklist is looking at the lane matchups and thinking about where you can get a kill early. So we're thinking about things such as volatility, which lanes are going to be volatile and which lanes have gank set up to make it so the chance of us getting a kill is high, right? Um, obviously, we don't want to go to a lane that has no CC, you know, not much damage, not much volatility. There's very little chance we're going to be likely to get a kill in, a kill in that lane. And the third thing on the checklist is the jungle matchup. So um, the jungle matchup is important because we need to know if we can invade him and if he can invade us to know where we're going to place our trinket or you know, to give us options and to make sure that we don't get caught off by some kind of invade or to make sure that we invade when we can. Okay, so I'll run through that checklist for this game for myself in this game. So the win conditions this game, I'm thinking about scaling and I'm thinking about objectives firstly and you know, I'm thinking scaling is pretty even. In the top matchup, we have a Malphite versus Gragas. Okay, I would say that they scale kind of evenly. In the jungle matchup, I would say Viego probably outscales me slightly. Uh, in the mid matchup, we have a Talon versus a Vex. Pretty even scaling again, I would say. And so when you don't really know, you know, who's, you know, you don't really have the answer, you can just leave it as like, a, like an even, right? We don't really know, so we'll just say, you know, the scaling is even. In the AD carry spot, Again, Zeri versus Kaisa, both very good scaling. So we'll leave that even again. And then Nami versus Nautilus, you know, even again, even though Enchant is usually kind of have the edge in scaling. So we think this game is very even scaling. And what's important in even scaling games, it becomes golden XP becomes even more important. Because um, there's no real advantage in the early game or in the, in the late game, right? So I'm thinking this game, I want to play... Now I'm analyzing my lane matchups. I'm thinking that because I have a Gragas versus a Malphite top, this is going to be my weak side lane. I'm probably only going to go here for a free kill. Uh, in the mid lane, you know, I have a Vex. <clears throat> so I know that this champion wants to fight around neutrals at level six. And I also know Talon's kind of way that he wants to play is he wants to have a lane where he can just push and roam, right? And in the bot matchup, uh, this is the lane I ended up playing towards and to conclude the checklist of what I wanted to do this game. It's to play around bot lane, farm dragons, leave the top side as my weak side, two tanks, and make sure that my Zarya and my Nami are not just getting perma ganked um, by a Nautilus who has a really good gank setup, right? So, and then lastly, of course, talking about the jungle matchup. So, so now I'm thinking, how can I play towards bot um, considering the jungle matchup as well, right? So obviously this game, 
Um, I am a I am a big uh, you know I love doing the Raptor invade, especially a Zin. So I'm I'm thinking here instantly. I'm thinking I want to do the Raptor invade. I know that I beat him one v one early, and this also plays towards my early game plan of of playing around bot lane, right? So. Uh, something that I did this game, and it, it, it is an adaptation of the Raptor Invade. Uh, so we'll start analyzing the game now. So I sweep in here because this is the adaptation I've actually um, learnt. Because basically what will happen is if they have a ward here, if they have a ward here, I will clear it, and then I will no longer do the Invade. I will just clear efficiently. So I'll just do like the Raptors, the Krogs, and the Red. And then because I've shown that I want to do the Raptor Invade this game, um, what happens is that the enemy jungle does something very inefficient. So because he thinks I may invade, he may do blue wolves and he may do something very inefficient. And so this is just a small lead that I can take by sweeping this. And then of course, if there is no ward, which happens in this game, I will end up going for the invade. So now that I have checked that there's no ward, because at the end of the day, the, the Raptor invade is a cheese play. Um, it is a cheese, so it is very easily counter uh, counterable. And yeah, this is my adaptation. Cheeses always get adapted further and further as they evolve and as players start, you know, realizing about them. But in this game, I guess Viego is not thinking about it. So, you know, when someone doesn't adapt correctly, I'm still going to play for it. I'm still going to punish it. So as we can see here, every single time I'm using you know, my map awareness, which is a fundamental that's incredibly important to update yourself on information on the map. So as here I'm walking past, even though it's very unlikely I'm probably going to gank mid or bot here, level two, I just want to know, you know, updating things such as the resources, the wave states, the body language. I'm just trying to get as much information as possible because the sooner I get that information, I'll be able to make a better decision around, you know, the information that I'm processing. It gives me more time to process information. So here, I know now that uh, the enemy jungle has started topside. And I know that he is probably clearing down or he knows that I'm doing this and he's either split map. So he'll either go to my top side or he'll, he'll be going to the bot side here. Those are his two options. Again here, consistently F king to bot. It doesn't, it's not really in a gankable position right now, but I'm still wanting that information of what is happening. So between every single auto attack, I'm actually updating the, the situation on bot. And now I know here that this doesn't look like a very good gank, right? Because multiple reasons for this. The first reason is the wave state, right? The wave state is bad for me to gank here because most likely I probably won't even get summoner spells here. And so the reason that this is bad is the high HP. My Nami doesn't really have great, great gank setup. The good thing here is that they don't know where I am, but there's like three negatives here. The bowling resources, they're full HP, they have both sums, the wave state is bad. So what do I do here? I gain that information and I make the decision to, you know, the only way I know that this works is I'm, ba I'm, I'm basically pinging my team. If Nautilus hooks in, then we can go for the gank. But if that doesn't happen, I'm never ever going to force this gank and waste time. I'm never going to force this gank. If I were to gank here, I would walk in, Nautilus would hook me, I would lose half my HP, and then I would... All of a sudden, I would be susceptible to maybe like um, Viego invading my bot side. And I would also show, I would give information. It would just be terrible if I went for this gank. So maybe I, I you know, I tell my team, maybe this is watered or something. You know, Nautilus isn't going in level two. And so what do I do? I just go back to my camps. I'm pinging that maybe Viego's on my top side. I see that Gragas has top priority. So, you know, I'm making him to go, go and check that for me. And if he's there, obviously this is very good for me because he'll get stopped. I'll get information. In this case, I think the Viego either he makes the correct play here because you have to think as well, you know, better junglers, they're going to make better decisions. He may think that splitting the map here is bad, right? Which it is bad for him to split the map here because then I'm just going to take these camps, gank bot again on the bounce. So maybe he's thinking here as well. I don't know. One of the two options he just cleared down and was, and he didn't know that I took his side. So he just ganked bot anyway. Or he's actually making a conscious decision here to gank bot anyway. And you see how, you know, even in this game, right? So I've done all I can for my bot lane. I don't have a ward to place for them. You know, I looked for the gank and it, it led to nothing. So if they die here, maybe I could have pinged uh, the river more. But I, I truly expected him to be topside. But he ended up being bot side. 
and so I'm still watching every single time, right? So fundamentally, I'm 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 seeing that they're ganking bot. I'm checking that my blue is okay. So now I I know for sure that he's bot, obviously, because he shows. And I'm constantly looking bot at the situation. Is there anything we can do here? I'm taking a look at the map right now. I'm taking a look that I have Vex moving here. And I know that the Scuttle Crab is going to spawn at 3.30. So I think, okay, maybe the Zin. Okay, so now the Zin has no idea where I am, right? He knows that I took these camps. But because I didn't show, I never gave that information. The next play that actually happens here is that I expect him to go for the Crab. He's not thinking about the Vex moving. And I'm going to hide here until he commits to the river. So if I walked out here before Vex was in range, I would have missed this kill. I'm also seeing that Viego's, his flash is being pinged from bot. So all of this information, the mid moving, you know, the bot lane pinging his flash, all of these pieces of information are leading me to be able to get this kill. So I'm waiting for my Vex to make the play first. I'm waiting for him to be in range. I'm going to take the kill. And then here, I believe that I instantly take a base because why? Okay, so I instantly base here because I have a thousand gold. I mean, this is obvious to, to base here, but maybe, you know, this is the next fundamental, which is called tempo. I never want to go back to here, right? I never want to go back to my Krugs. Not only is this just inefficient, but I already have a great spot to base here. I'm not going to get canceled. I have an item. And the most important thing is I want to match this Viego on the top side. So if he goes for my topside camps, I will be there to counter. If he goes for the Scuttle Crab, maybe I have a chance to invade him, depending on the map state. So I want to match when I'm ahead. I always want to match the enemy jungler when I'm ahead. I want to buy very quickly. So I see Viego. Viego was slightly ahead of me, obviously, because I killed him and then I took the Crab. So this is his Crab to take. My tempo is not good enough to fight him here. But now, because I know he started topside, I know his Krugs are spawning at 4.15. And I know his raptors are spawning just after that, right? So if I have a chance to invade here because I'm stronger because I have a pickaxe, then I will go for that. Depending on if the mid, you know, depending on what mid you verse. So if I'm bursting like a mage here, I will always go for this invade because I know that that mage can't really impact. But versing a Talon, it may be a bit more uh, risky because obviously he can just jump over walls. And if I'm fighting the, you know, the Viego on these camps, obviously it's very easy for Talon to follow and it's very hard for my Vex to follow. So here, um, I ended up punishing him because, you know, he actually tries to actually take my blue side. So I'm, so the reason we base here is so we're ready to punish, you know, we're ready to match and punish him if he makes a mistake. So we match here, he takes the crab, I'm here to punish. Two options, he takes my blue side and I punish him or I invade his red side but in this case, because it's a Talon, I'm most likely just wanting to clear down and continue playing around my bot side. That will be my default gameplay here. But in the end, I end up finding him here. So right here, when I'm playing the skirmish, you know, even though I am stronger, um, you know, Viego, st Viego still with Conqueror is, a, is still a very strong early game jungler. And because he has Conqueror and I have uh, Halo Blades, it means that my burst is stronger. But now I need to kind of kite because now he'll beat me. And also, for some reason, blue buff is is beating my head in. So I'm kind of kiting, waiting for my Vex. You know, I'm paying attention to top here. I know that both Malphite and Gragas are coming, but of course Gragas is a more useful champion than Malphite pre-6. So we end up getting a, picking up a killer. Make sure you take kills, right? Take kills for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you can only rely on yourself. So take kills. Be confident. Carry the game. Okay, now here. What am I going to do? Do I care about grubs this game? Right, so that's the next question. Do I care about grubs in this time right now? So I have two options here. I can take the grubs or I can clear down and play around my bot side because right now my bot lane is resetting. And if I sync up my tempo here, so I can take my three top side camps and I can basically be synced up with them by the time they get back to bot lane to continue playing around bot side, which is what I wanted to do and which is what my game plan was. And do I care about grubs this game? No, of course not, because there's no split pushes in this game. Of course, it would be nice for my XP, but I want to make sure that I am bot side because I know that that's the lane that's going to be fighting the most, and I want to be the difference in that fight. I know that they will fight. I know Nautilus will hook in. So I'm looking to play around bot here. I'm skipping the grubs. I'm making a conscious decision. I'm looking at the bot wave. I'm thinking, can I make it to this wave on time to gank it? No, I can't. So I'm taking that information in. I know I cannot make it to this wave on time if they just clear it. 
So I'm starting the Raptor camp here. And then of course they fight, right? So let's see my camera control here, my awareness. I see that my bot lane is fighting. The Zeri instantly dies. So instantly I change my decision here, right? So because this happened, okay, if this didn't happen, I know that the bot lane would be volatile. If my Zeri was still alive here, I know that it would be volatile. I would either part to my Krogs and then look to gank bot on the next wave, on this wave right here. But because my AD carry died, I'm changing my plan. I'm now going to the Grubs because there's nothing left to play for on the bot side because my AD carry died. So now I'm changing my plan and I also see the Viego top side and I also see that he's going for Grubs here. So I'm instantly map awareness, information, my, my AD carry dies, so I'm very quickly making a decision here. Change plan. Adapt in the moment, right? You need to adapt very, very quickly to these situations. Because if I just keep clearing clearing down here to my Krogs, I'm going to miss a very big opportunity, which is about to happen on the top side. So my, the Viego, you know, not too confident to go for the Grubs straight away. Luckily, we have a ward here. Um, the Gragas kind of makes it pretty obvious, but I know that Viego has no flash. I use my E, he gets one shot. Malphite just hits six, trades the one for one kill. And, you know, holding my, should have landed, landed the knock up there, but my attack speed got slowed a little bit. And then of course here, next fundamental, I know that I need to push this wave in, otherwise the wave will just freeze here. And, you know, I'm kind of messing, messing over my Gragas here if I don't push this wave and reset the, the lane for him. Because by pushing this wave, the waves will now reset and they'll meet in the middle and it won't be frozen. If I left this wave here, it will be frozen. It will be very, very good for Malphite because he would he would kind of get all of this XP because the wave would just be stuck right here. So I need to push this wave in for my Gragas. My Gragas just did me a huge, you know, service. He gave me two kills. And now I need to, you know, repay my, my Gragas by spending a bit of time. Obviously, it's still nice for me. I get gold. And then again, instantly resetting. Why am I not going to the Grubs here? Why am I not going to the Scuttle Crab here? Why? Because I have already my you know, 2.1k gold, I still don't care about the grubs. I care about killing people and being the difference in the fights where it matters. And where it matters this game is not, you know, around grubs. I'm just trying to be on tempo and be at the right place at the right time. So here, I buy my item and I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do out of base? I see my Gragas is actually, you know, ran straight to the bot side, right? So I'm coming, I'm coming out of base with Eclipse. I'm absolutely like, I have Eclipse at seven minutes. Right, so I'm instantly looking to get active. I want to get active. I don't I don't really want to just clear right now. I really want to get active and use the fact that I literally have an eclipse to completely destruct the game. So I'm looking to either straight away take dragon or I'm looking to straight away, you know, invade one of his camps or something. And I also see Gragas is here, but let's see actually what I do here. I end up actually parting back to the top side because I I, I think I remember, I think I'm too slow. So I don't really want to run straight here to his camps if they're going to, going to be dead. And I also see here that the condition again, this condition may be a throw to go straight for this dragon, right? Because my Zeri just took a chunk. So this could be a throw going for dragon again. So now I'm just going to play it slow. Okay. Yes, I do have an item, but I don't see any opportunity to immediately use my strength. So I'm going to go to my top side. They end up getting dragon. So, you know, the reason, again, why I don't walk to this dragon, okay, I actually make the decision to go topside before this, which I think may actually be a mistake, right? I think I should be pathing towards the dragon and actually using my, my strength as soon as I can. I know that I don't have enough time to take his bot side camps. So this could be actually a mistake that I make this game. I actually think that pathing towards the dragon here, but then when I see Zeri get chunked, I should change my decision. Just like the last time when he got killed in the last round, I should change my decision based off the information that's available to me. So this is, this is the enemy's dragon here because of the bot lane situation. My bot lane's getting completely diffed here. You know, they're losing. And it, it's fine because I can now... Now I'm thinking about how do I punish this dragon take? Well, I'm going to take his topside camps because as long as he doesn't know that I'm taking his topside here, this is very important. If he ever spots me on a ward here, this would be very bad because the map would become split, right? But because I'm sweeping in, I know that there's no wards. I'm checking for vision here, right? I'm checking for wards here. And now that I know there's no wards, you know, he doesn't know that I'm in his top side. He expects me, maybe I'm clearing down like this. But in actual, I'm using the fact that he used his tempo. I'm punishing his the fact that he used his tempo here on the dragon. So I'm being very composed in this game. I'm not rushing things. I'm staying composed. He uses his tempo on dragon. 
So now I know I have tempo to invade his top side and I know that there's no wards here. So what's he going to do after dragon? He's either going to clear to the top side or he's going to take my jungle if he sees me on a ward top side. So if I got spotted on a ward here, I should not do this play. I should then continue playing around the bot side if I get spotted on a ward here. Because I do not want the situation to be where the map is split for him on bot side and me on top side. I don't want the situation. So there's a fight here. Now I'm now I'm using the fact that I have Eclipse. I'm up a level. You know, I'm very, very strong here. And of course, you know, I just one-shot him. So punishing the enemy for doing... So I'm punishing... You know, I didn't run straight to the dragon. I'm playing off of my tempo. I'm not playing off of his advantage, which is his bot lane. And his tempo on the bot side. Because he did have tempo on the bot side here before this round. Right? Because I killed him top side. I killed him here. Now he's, you know, on the bot side of the map. So he already has tempo on this side, at least for here. And I just want to, you know, cement this tempo thing because you don't want to be chasing his tempo. If we were both running, say he was dead right now and he was running out of base here. If I can make it to these camps by the time he makes it to these camps, this is a good play. But my tempo isn't good enough. I'm actually, you know, I need to not... Um, Run to dead camps. You know, running to dead camps is very bad. I need to wait for him to use tempo on the dragon, which he does. And now I can use my tempo to invade him topside. <clears throat> so, take his topside camps. I want to make sure, again, I'm not looking to do the grubs here. Because the grubs for me this game is useless. I want to make sure that I'm on the bot side of the map. So I'm just literally crossing here. I don't care if they see me. You know, enemy bot lane, you guys can see me if you want. If you guys fight around bot here, I'm going to be the difference. Again, we see Viego top, so I'm immediately using this to punish him. I know that the last, you know, two minutes, I know that his camps on bot side might, may be up. And this is perfect for me now. So now he's playing on the top side, and I'm on the bot side. You see how, because after the Raptors and the Red Hair, I didn't go for his Krugs, I didn't go for the, for the, the, the Rift Herald, because this situation is much more important for me than taking Grubs, than playing bot top side. Because as you can see here, you know, bot lane still, even if you show crossing, people still will fight. The fighting champions like Nautilus and, and Kaiser, they will still fight. Okay, some good players will like recognize that they're supposed to be playing weak side here. You know, if the, if the enemy bot lane was good, they would recognize the Zin just crossed through mid and he's now on the bot side. So we shouldn't fight bot while Aviego takes the free grubs. But, you know, no one, you know, it's solo queue. No one thinks like this. Everyone wants to carry. So you need to be there to punish. Okay, I think I make a misplay here. I, I broke my number one rule, which is when you can walk up in queue, you always walk up in queue. I think I was trying to block his E maybe. I don't know. I broke my number one rule. Uh, most importantly, my Zeri gets the kill on the Kaiser. And look at this situation now. We've completely blocked their winning bot lane from carrying the game. So I used my lead to not only punish the fact that they went for Dragon, but I also use my lead to make sure that I'm playing on the bot side, you know, forcing, you know, I'm basically forcing and, and sculpting the game to the way that I want it to be because I'm stronger than the Viego. I can choose whatever I want. I can choose dragon. I can choose grubs. I can choose his bot side camps. So I can choose however I want to play this game. Okay. Yeah. He gets grubs. Cool. Now I'm on tempo, right? So instantly after this play, I'm not going back to my bot side camps. This is very important as well. I have 1500, look, I literally instantly press the B button. I don't even care if they see me. Okay, maybe I could have done some acting here. That would have been good as well to make it seem like I'm going back to my bot side, to this Viego. Um, but I'm just thinking tempo, 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 tempo. I want to instantly base here because I know that my top side camps are spawning and I know that my weak side camps are spawning and I want to clear these weak side camps. I don't care about the Rift Herald. I want to clear these weak side camps as soon as I can and then instantly play on the bot side of the map. I want to use all of my time. I want to use it all on the bot side. And look, because I'm on tempo, when he tries to take my top side again, I'm here to punish him. I try to walk forwards to get hit with the cone with him. Um, he narrowly escapes, but that's okay. Just going to keep farming. I see him here again. I'm wondering what he's doing. And this is a big waste of time for him because he's not only not farming, but I'm, I'm, I'm the one farming and he's not farming. 
I think I misplayed this mechanically a little bit. I should have flashed on the Viego instead of going for the Talon. You know, Talon can jump over walls. So, a little misplay by me. Uh, but I think this ends up working out. Because I'm so strong. Like, look how strong I am coming out of base here. It's just like, it's not even comparable. Like, look at, look at Viego's items compared to mine. So, I can do whatever I want in this game. And this is how you 1v9. Even though my bot lane, you know, my top lane and my main lane were playing whatever, they were just you know, even with the, with the counterparts. But I'm the one influencing all of these fights and all of these decisions, right? It's me. I'm the one doing all the influence in this game, you know? Obviously my team, yeah, it's, they're, not, they're not completely running it down. They're not all inting 0-10, you know? Unavoidable wins will happen. But then in the games that you have influence, right? This game where my bot was losing, you can be the difference. Okay, so as soon as I, you know, get some kills, I'm instantly looking to take enemy camps before my own. I take his raptors, I take the scuttle. Now we're, now we're on the strong side, right? Me and Nami are paired off, so we want to hunt people down. And again here, you know, taking camps. I know that I can't, I don't think I can make it to the bot wave before they clear it. I see that this guy, this guy says very low. And again, I'm in proximity. So I'm basically making it, completely unplayable for their bot lane to make you know to play the game because i'm always taking his you know his top side my bot side i'm always in proximity so every single time that they make an aggressive aggressive play you know besides the early game where I, you know when i can't make the difference when my when my lanes instantly die i'll adapt and i'll make a different play but the main focus is i want to be ready to punish them so right now the enemy bot is just saying jungle they, they're just saying jungle gap they're saying this is unplayable this zin is like Always bot, making it unplayable for them. I'm basically, you know, I'm making them not be able to play. I'm making them not be able to breathe because I know that the enemy teams, you know, I know that they're going to play aggressive. I know that as as a comp, right, if I shut down the Kaiser, they also had, don't have very, have, have very much damage. And I also know that they just want to play aggressively. So I'm not wasting time anywhere else. I'm not wasting tra time trying to kill Malphite because that would be useless. You know, ganking mid will be okay, but it's also a talent. He clears the wave instantly and he leaves. So it makes my last option, which is bot lane. I know that the Nautilus wants to, you know, E in. And so basically, I'm just playing for kills this game. You know, in a game with even scaling, I just want to be at the right place at the right time. I want to make sure that every single fight that happens, I can be in proximity to be the difference. Look, look how unplayable it is for their bot lane. Look how unplayable. It's so unplayable for their bot lane, just because of how I'm playing. And now, okay, so I'm going back for the dragon here. But I realize, oh, I'm making a mistake here. I need to make it even more unplayable for this Kaiser. I, I need to dive him here. He shouldn't, you know, this was a huge mistake by me. I should have done what I call um, posturing. So I should, I should actually posture right here. And if he stays for this wave, I should kill him. If he leaves, then we take the dragon. So we're looking at order of operations. Okay, this is a fundamental where you want to take the best thing first. The best thing is to dive him. The second best thing is maybe camps, and the third best thing is maybe dragon, right? Maybe maybe taking dragon over his blue is obviously more worth. But order of operations, you want to work from back to front. So you always want to go for the thing that's the best and, you know, gives you the most gold and the most XP. You want to go for that thing first. And the reason for that is because just where, how the, the map works, you know, you're walking back here. This is the closest thing for them, for the, for the, for the Viego and for their team. So if I take this first and then I take the dragon, um, they won't be able to catch me. So if I take the dragon first, and then I go for this dive or this or this or these camps, right? Then obviously they have enough tempo to come back and defend. But if I go for it straight away, you know, then they're coming back to the dragon. It takes them longer to walk from base to the dragon than obviously to the wolves. So I'm forcing the Kaiser off. If I went there earlier, I think I would have killed him. This was a bit bad. I wasted a bit of time. This was an unforced error by... Uh, the enemy, you know, Viego thinks he can kill me here, but you know, I'm still, I'm Zin Zhao, I'm still way stronger. So this was an unforced error. Yeah, I definitely should have. This is another mistake I played, I, I made. I should have been posturing on this wave to kill this Kaiser. Ends up working anyway. So now we're going to see in the mid game in 14 minutes, how do we close the game out now? Okay, so instantly again, I'm basing. I have 1800 gold, I have my item. Basing and also syncing up tempo with my team. You see how my Nami is also basing here? I want to base with her. I don't want to do my Krugs here again because I want to instantly impact the map. I want to impact here. 
I want to impact this. I want to take these towers now and I want to use the fact that I have two items and the rest of the game has like one, one and a half. Look at the items right now. I have two items and all the rest of the champions on my team have one and a half. So I need to use the fact that I'm stronger. So I'm never farming my camps here. You see this? I'm never touching these camps because I want to take his camps, his Rift Herald, and look for aggressive plays here with my Nami. So I'm syncing up with my Nami. Very strong, you know, combo. And I'm instantly looking for an aggressive play. You know, I'm making the game again. I'm making it unplayable. Imagine if I went to my Grump on my Wolves here. Right? I'm just, I'm just basically, you know, I'm completely trolling if I go to my camps here. Because I should be taking... Firstly, the first priority is taking their camps and killing them. The second priority is playing around vision here and punishing them if they walk up. And then if that if nothing happens, if they respect, we take the we take the objective. So they walk up here. I look for a chunk. Look how strong I am. You know, he gets literally one shot. And look at, look again. I'm looking to punish the enemy. I'm looking really hard to punish the enemy, right? I think this was a bit of an overstay, but I think I recognize that because I got that Kaiser chunk, right? I want to look to take the tower now. So maybe I, you know, I don't need Rift Herald anymore. So this is what I would be calling uptime, okay? And I think after this Rift Herald, we'll show what's called downtime, which is a very, very important mid game term. So now, okay, so I've made all my plays, right? I've, I've invaded, I've gotten vision, I've gotten the mid tower, I've gotten the objective. So this is a prime example of what's called downtime. And this is where people, you know, Sometimes usually your team will base here. Sometimes, you know, you can, I, I could probably continue going here with Rift Herald. But this is what is called downtime, where now I should farm all my camps. But I'm still staying composed in this game. I know I just took a big, you know, we just got a big advantage, okay? So there's no need to keep going, right? League is kind of a turn-based game. Look, watch my team here, okay? So my team is also having downtime. They're also playing well. They take this tower, right? My Zeri is farming camps, which is also good. So we're all having downtime. You know, usually your support will need to like reset here and get wards or whatever, but she's not, you know, she's not doing that. And now we're flipping sides and we're going to play for the top side. So I'm going to skip my Krugs here. I'm pinging my support. Look what I'm doing here. I'm getting her to be on the right side of the map with me because now I want to play for this tower and I want to rift to bot. So make sure another, you know, important habit that you can build. You know, you can play with mute all, but you should still ping your team. So I'm pinging Nami. Come here, come here. You know, this talent shouldn't be able to get this wave. This The fact that he got this wave was really, really bad. Now my Zeri is basing, so her tempo is, you know, she's messing up the tempo of the game. So I base with her here, right? So as soon as, as soon as talent gets this bot wave and the Zeri bases, it means that this round is now over. Okay, so it's finished now. So as soon as Zeri bases and we don't get the bot wave, I'm going to base with my bot with, so I'm syncing up tempo. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make the plan for my team. You know, when you're 12 and 0, Usually people listen to your pings and your plan, which is also a very good, um, it's another reason why you should make sure that, you know, you're the carry of the game because people will listen to you. So look here, yeah, I'm shadowing my, um, my Vex. I want to make sure that we protect this wave so we can get this tower with Rift Herald. I know that my Gragas has TP, so I don't want to play around the top side here around my Gragas because he will just TP. I want to play around my Vex. I want to play, play around the bot tower. I want to play around the dragon. I'm thinking about what the next objective is always. So this is also another very important fundamental, thinking about what the next objective is. The next objective for me this game is the um, is the bot tower. Okay, another, I don't know, I have, suppose I haven't played Zin for a while here. Very bad mechanics here. I should just, you know, I'm, I'm prepping my Q here, but I should never E over. Right, I should just keep letting Vex poke him. Um, so this was a very big misplay from me. He gets away. We're still playing for the bot wave. And, you know, when something like this goes a bit, you know, something doesn't go your way, it's fine to just go back, right? So your team was messing up your tempo. All of the tempo in these rounds, right? Zeri's basing now. Now the Nami starts basing, right? So look, now Nami bases, I think. Yeah. So your team is completely messing up the tempo here in the mid game. It's fine. Okay. Wait for them to be back on tempo here. So now I'm just waiting still. I'm waiting for my Vex. I'm taking the red buff. I'm just waiting. Now when my team is coming back, I'm getting ready to make the play. So even if it's slow, okay, don't feel pressured to make a huge play and a huge mistake. Wait for your team's tempo. And then when you guys get back, you know, synced up, you can make an aggressive play like this. So now I know that I have my entire team behind me. Now I'm going to make another aggressive play. 
I'm pinging here, okay, and we get his flash. And now good, this is how we use the Rift Herald in the mid game. Okay, so you wanna make sure that, you know, you ideally use it with the wave here. So we wanna use it with the wave so we can get the tower. But from this mid game, you know, the biggest takeaway is that you wanna wait for your team to have, you know, be synced up. Okay, people will die, people will recall badly, people will make mistakes. In that time, just be patient. Okay, the game is not going to be lost in like two seconds if your team dies. If your team even dies twice here, okay, say my team just died twice, all right? My, my, my mid dies, my bot lane dies, my mid dies, my bot lane dies. It's okay. Just downtime. Farm your camps when your, when your team is dying. And then when your team is alive, you know, ping them. Make sure they're on the same page as you. And, you know, really command your team. Right? I'm punishing... I'm still being aggressive here, right? So if, if, if Nautilus walks up, I know he's, he's making a mistake. I'm still very strong. I have my entire team behind me. So I'm never making, you know, solo plays. I'm always still waiting for my team. And, you know, small mechanics things here. I'm prepping my Q on the Malphite. Target selection, right? So watch. Q Malphite. And then E towards the Viego. I know he has no flash, no ult. So he gets one shot. And this is how you be the difference. This is how you 1v9. Patience, composure, decision making. Apply this with fundamentals. You will instantly win, like increase your win rate by like 10 times. If you do these things. I'm not saying that I play, you know, a perfect game every game. And I think in future videos, I'll probably, you know, make videos on how to play from behind. All, you know, those kinds of concepts. But for now, I just want to show, you know, what it kind of looks like to control the game to control the game to, to have it in your hands okay so why do we not go back to dragon here again tempo we have 2k gold dragon this game doesn't really matter only one has been taken so it's not really a big factor in this game we're so far ahead here that we just want to take look i'm just pinging the baron because we're so far ahead okay you can take dragon you can still take it slow um depending on what elo you play at i think at lower elo taking baron is kind of risky because no one even helps you no one really cares about it, so taking it slower is probably better. But again here, I'm waiting for my team, right? So I take Scuttle first, and I'm waiting for my team here. I'm waiting for them to catch up to my tempo. So I probably could have done like Wolves and Scuttle. This is a time where I call it Sneaky Camps. You want to do some Sneaky Camps, wait for your team. I'm still waiting for my team here, and then when my team is walking up here, you know, they have, I have Zeri E and, and Vex Ultimate, obviously, so I immediately jump on this guy's up. And pretty confident in this fight. I have three items. I'm completely unkillable. You know, walk into their jungle, make it unplayable for them again. Now I'm pinging Baron. Even though my team see my team, my team is still not listening here. I'm just gonna keep pinging, keep spam pinging, keep spam pinging. Nautilus <laughs> tries to go in for a steal. <laughs> and after this Baron, I think the game is basically won. Let's just see how we close it out. So I want to go top wave. I see my team fighting again. And again, I want to be the difference. So my team still here dies. Kaiser gets out. I think it actually takes a while for us to, to close the game out. But this is pretty much the game. I'll just play fast now to see what we do at the end. And even here, you see how my team is like, I'm waiting for them in tempo, so I'm just going to farm. Then when they're on tempo now, they're walking up to the mid wave. I'm going to get active. Getting really active here. Prepping my Q, going for the Malphite. Because I don't really want to die forwards on, under this tower. You know, I also know my role in a team fight, which is, you know, I do do a lot of damage right now, but I still want to be, you know, a frontline, and I also want to peel for my, my Zeri. And this is kind of just knowing your champion's limits, knowing, you know, your game knowledge. But I'm always looking as in to prep my Q here and look for a knock up. So I'm not hitting the tower here. Watch, I'm, I'm walking up and I'm waiting for them to misstep. But I was already thinking about this play back here. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about how close this Kaiser is. She walks up, she gets chunked, she dies. And I believe that is the game. Again here, look, prep my Q. Prep Q, jump in, knock up, do half his health, play slow. The game isn't over until the next Nexus explodes. And with that, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, leave a comment of any questions or video suggestions you have for me. And I hope that you were able to take some things from this video and apply them to your own game.